everyone. I wanted to come on here um, to talk to you about what God has been showing me here lately, um, what he's been teaching me, um, and I just wanted to, to pass that on to you. Um, for a while now, God has been leading me to Daniel 11 and 12. And um, just, it's, it's taken a while for me to gain understanding. Um, I've been praying over it um, just every time, because nightly I'll just take my Bible and I'll close my eyes and I'll just open up to wherever God wants me to read from that, that evening. And again, like so often it's been Daniel 11 and 12 and um, there for a while I was, you know, even feeling some frustration, like I don't understand how this relates to now. Um, but recently, um, I noticed that it spoke of the time of the end. And um, it does mention the abomination of desolation. Um, what we're supposed to look out for, Jesus mentions it in Matthew 24. Um, also in um, uh, Mark 13 and Luke 21, it's, it, it is the same exact um, talk Jesus was giving for Matthew 24. And so all of these events are connected. So Daniel 11 mentions the abomination of, of desolation. So does Matthew 24. So um, Daniel was shown um, a vision and, and told about the time of the end uh, for a reason. Um, and then he was told to seal up the scroll until, uh, until the designated time. Um, there's a reason why Daniel was shown and why uh, Jesus does talk about, you know, how we're supposed to look and, and be alert and to pay attention. And, um, and, and he gives us things to look out for. This video is not about me trying to um, predict the future or uh, try to connect um, any current events, past events that, that might um, be connected with the prophecy about the time of the end. This is not what that video is about. This video is about um, me just wanting to um, equip you guys with understanding and um, just so you guys know what to look out for. Um, and, and Jesus shares warnings about, um, you know, don't be fooled, this will happen, or so-and-so might say this, but so it's, it's just wise to know what to look out for. So I'm gonna go through um, and just share with you, um, I, I wrote down notes from Daniel 11 and 12, um, Matthew 24, Luke 13, or I'm sorry, Luke 21, Mark 13, and then parts of John. Um, and then I just kind of compiled them all together. What did Daniel see? What did Jesus say? And then kind of just compile these notes together um, in somewhat of like a timeline, like before the abomination of desolation and then after. Um, so that we know what to look out for. So I'm just going to go down and, and read to you my, my notes. Um, all right. Watch out. Don't let anyone fool you. The king of the north will return to his own land with great wealth and his heart will be set against the holy covenant. He will take action and then return home. We will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but we're not to fear for this must happen. At the time designated, the king of the north will come to the south. Ships from Kittim will come against him so that his courage will fail him. The king of the north will, will retreat and take furious action against the holy covenant and show favor to those who abandon the holy covenant. The people of the holy covenant will be arrested and punished, sometimes even to death. People will hate us because we belong to Jesus. Many will be trapped into betraying and hating each other. But don't worry about what to say in your defense. It will not, it will not be just us speaking, but the Holy Spirit too. Jesus will give us an eloquence and wisdom that no adversary will, will be able to resist or refute. Many will come in Jesus' name even, but 
claim to be the Messiah and lead many astray. False prophets will appear and fool many. People's love will grow cold because of increased distance from Torah, which is God's teaching. People and families will fight, nations will fight, earthquakes will take place, famine will happen, but this is just the beginning of the birth pains. Nations will be in anxiety and bewilderment at the sound and surge of the sea. The good news about the kingdom will be announced through the whole earth as the witness to the nations. Then the end will come. Armed forces at the king of the north's order will profane the holy sanctuary and fortress. They will abolish the daily burnt offerings and set up the abomination that causes desolation or devastation, standing in the holy place where it ought not to be. Those in Judah must escape to the hills because Jerusalem will be surrounded by enemies and is about to be destroyed at that time. If on the roof, do not go down to gather your things. If in the field, do not go back to collect your coat. It will be a terrible time for pregnant women and nursing mothers. It is time to escape. Those who act, act wickedly against the Holy Covenant, will be corrupted by the King of the North's blandishments and flattery. But the people who know their God, who hold out to the end, will stand firm and prevail. These are the days of vengeance, when everything written in the Tanakh, which is the Jewish Bible slash um, Old Testament, will come true. Those among the people will those among the people who have discernment will cause the rest of the people to understand what is happening. Nevertheless, for a while they will fall victim to sword, fire, exile, and pillage. When they stumble, they will receive a little help, although many who join them will be insincere. Even some of those with discernment will stumble so that some of them will be refined, purified, and cleansed for an end yet to come at the designated time. Keep watch on yourselves, or your heart will become dulled by carousing, drunkenness, and the worries of everyday living, and that day will be sprung upon you like a trap." for it will close in on everyone, no matter where they live, throughout the whole world. The King of the North will uh, do as he pleases and exalt himself above any god and will utter monstrous blasphemies against the god of gods. He will only prosper until the period of wrath is over, for what has been determined must take place. He will show no respect for any god, unknown to um, uh, because he will consider himself greater than all of them. He will honor a God unknown to his ancestors and confer honor on those he acknowledges by distributing land as a reward. He will be an invader and overrun and then move on. Only a few countries will be saved from his power. Edom, Moab, and Ammon. He will also control gold and silver and everything of value once he pitches his tent between the seas and the mountain of holy glory he will end then at that time the great prince michael who champions our people the chosen the elect the faithful overcomers will stand up this will be a time of distress unparalleled between the time they became a nation to that moment the time of trouble will be worse than there has ever been from the beginning of the world until now and there will be nothing like it again but immediately following the trouble of those times the sun will grow dark the moon will stop shining, the stars will fall from the sky, and then the powers in heaven will be shaken. Indeed, if the length of this time had not been limited, no one would survive, but for the sake of the chosen and the elect, its length will be limited. But don't believe anyone who says, look, here's the Messiah, here he is, listen, he is out in the desert, or he's hidden away in a secret room. These are false prophets who will lie and perform great miracles, amazing things, so as to fool even the chosen if possible. For when the Son of Man comes, it will be like lightning that flashes out of the east and fills the whole sky to the western horizon. Everyone all over the world will see him. Then the ones whose names are found in the book of life will be delivered, so stand up and hold your head up high then. The sign of the Son of Man will, will appear in the sky. All the tribes of the land will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with tremendous power and glory. He will send out his angels with a great chauffeur or trumpet. 
and they will gather together his chosen people from the four winds in every direction, from one end of heaven to another. We must always be ready. The dead will rise, and two will be in the field. One will be taken, and the other left behind. Once the Son of Man comes in his glory... He will then separate the sheep to the right, the ones who fed the hungry, gave the thirsty something to drink, clothed, clothed the naked, made strangers their guests, took care of the sick, and visited the imprisoned. He will separate them to eternal life. And then the goats to the left, the ones who refuse to do these things to eternal shame where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Daniel also saw this in Daniel 7, uh, verse 13 through 14. He said, I kept watching the night visions when I saw coming with the clouds, coming with the clouds of heaven, someone like a son of man. He approached the ancient one and was led into his presence. To him was given rulership and glory and a kingdom so that all people's nations languages should serve him. His rulership is an internal uh, rulership that will not pass away and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. But what day or hour exactly? Only the Ancient One knows. The Father knows and it is already de designated for a specific time. We only know it will be some time after the good news has been announced to the whole world. Those who can discern will shine like the brightness of heaven's dome and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Until the time of the end, many will rush here and there as knowledge increases and when the power of the holy people is no longer being shattered. Many will purify, cleanse, and refine themselves, but the wicked will keep on acting wickedly and none of the wicked will understand, but those with discernment will understand. These people, this generation, will not pass away before all these things happen, meaning all these things will happen within one generation's time. Daniel was told more specifically that from the time that the regular burnt offering is taken away and the abomination that causes desolation and devastation is set up, there will be 1,290 days but how blessed are those that wait and arrive at the 1,335th day. So stay alert. Always be praying that you will have the strength to escape all the things that will happen and to stand in the presence of the Son of Man. So I just shared scripture from Daniel eleven twelve, 12, Matthew 24, Luke 21, Mark 13. I just compiled all of the things that Daniel saw and Jesus said right there. Um, and then I'm going to just share some some scripture that um, was encouraging to me and, and hopefully encourages and, and spurs you on. Uh, John 5, uh, verse 24 through 25. Yes, indeed, I, Jesus is talking, uh, tell you, whoever hears what I am saying and trusts the one who sent me has eternal life. That is, he will not come up for judgment, but has already crossed from death to life. Yes, indeed, I tell you that there is coming a time, in fact, it's already here, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who listen will come to life. John 5, uh, verse 27 through 21, 29, also he, the Father, has given him, Jesus, authority. Daniel uh, says that in Daniel 7. Uh, to execute judgment because he is the son of man. Don't be surprised at this because the time is coming when all who are in the grave will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done good to a resurrection of life and those who have done evil to a resurrection of judgment. Whoever trusts God has life and by trusting righteousness is credited to his account. John 8 uh, verse 12, Jesus spoke to them again. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light which gives life. So by knowing God, we will stand firm and prevail. By knowing God, it says that in Daniel 11, because they knew their God, they stood firm and prevailed. So watch yourself so your heart will not become dull and, and have discernment. Do not be fooled or surprised because we have been told ahead of time. Yes, he tells us ahead of time for a reason. Um, so I just encourage you guys all, um, submit to God, take a stand against the adversary and he will flee from you. That's James four. Um, and then also tonight, um, before sharing all of this, 
um, cause I recently shared it in a blog, but I was just praying. Um, I was consulting God on this and, um, I once again, just, you know, closed my eyes and, and opened up to, opened up his word and, and, um, just waited to, to see where he led me and he led me to Zechariah nine. And I'm going to be honest, I read this first a couple times through and I didn't understand it. And then I started connecting the dots or the Holy Spirit, um, allowed me to he gave me understanding so i'm so grateful praise god um so it's really interesting if you read um daniel 11 and 12 and then you read zachariah 9 it it really there um it kind of parallels so um in Dan or in zachariah 9 i'm just going to read it um in, in the land of hadrach and uh, Damascus is where God comes to rest for the eyes of humankind are directed toward the Lord so or as are those of all the tribes of Israel also Hamat at its border Zor and Zidon for she is very wise Zor built herself a fortified tower heaping up silver as if it were dust and fine gold as if it were mud in the streets um, in Daniel 11 it says then the king of the north will return to his own land with great wealth um, even says later on that he will control gold and silver and all things of value. Um, back to Zechariah 9. But the Lord, Adonai, will dispossess her and break her power at sea. Going back to Daniel 11, um, it says, uh, but this time things will turn out different than before because ships from Katim will come against him. Ships from the sea will come against him so that his courage will fail him and then he'll have to retreat um he will take furious action against the holy covenant okay going back to Zechariah 9 while the city itself will be destroyed by fire on seeing this Ashkelon will be terrified Azah too will writhe in pain likewise Ekron as her hopes are dashed that the king will vanish from Azah um in Daniel 11 it says that he has to retreat um Ashkelon will be without people, and a mixed people will live in Ashdod, as I destroy the pride of, of the, the uh, Philistines. I will end their eating meat with, with its blood still in it, snatching the disgusting things from between their teeth. But the surviving remnant will belong to our God. It's definitely talking about the surviving remnant. It's talking about those who stand firm and, and wait, wait on God. Um, in Daniel 11 and 12, um, and then later on in Zechariah 9, uh, it says, Then I will guard my house against armies so that none will march through or return. No oppressor will ever again overrun them. For now I am watching with my own eyes. Rejoice with all your heart, daughter of Zion. Shout out loud, uh, daughter of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and he is victorious, yet he is humble. Uh, he's riding on a donkey. Yes, on a lowly donkey's colt. I, we know that's Jesus. He already fulfilled that. Um, I will banish chariots from Ephraim and war horses from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow will be banished and he will proclaim peace to the nations. He will rule from sea to sea um, and from the, the Euphrates River to the ends of the earth. Also you, by the blood of your covenant, I release your prisoners from the dungeon, the cistern that has no water in it. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners with hope. This day I declare to you that I will grant you double reparation, for I bent Judah as my bow and made Ephraim its arrow. I will rouse your son Zion, make you like a warrior sword against your son's Greece. And then Adonai will appear over them. And his arrow will flash like lightning. Adonai Elohim will blow the chauffeur and go out in the whirlwinds of the south. Adonai Sfaod, uh, the Lord of hosts, will defend them. They will devour and trample the sling stones. They will drink and roar as if they had drunk wine. They, they will be filled like basins and like the corners of the altar. On that day, the Lord, their God, will save them as the flock of his own people. For they will be like gems in a crown sparkling over his countryside what wealth is theirs what beauty grain will make the young men thrive and new wine the young women so i just wanted to encourage you guys all with that um so that when this time comes and i believe we're already here i believe it's within our lifetime um we won't be surprised we won't be shaken we won't waver we won't uh it, he tells us all of this ahead of time for a reason. So 
um, take heed, read for yourselves, pray, um, and God bless you all. All right, have a good night. Bye.